when you started doing this research and, and turning up this dirt, were you, were you as shocked as I am right now? Yes. So what do you think the deal is? Where do you think the connection here lies? Do you think, um, I mean, <laughs> or do you think that this is just a coincidence that now not only Barrington Wisenhunt is no longer with us, but now also Peter Smith and Klaus Eberwein, who ha happen to be in the States. I don't know what's going on. You made this video, you requested the judge provide witness protection to the people involved in the DNC lawsuit, the fraud lawsuit, and you actually heard back from the judge and he would not give you the counsel, he would not give you the witness protection you requested. What drove you to producing that video? What made you want to request that protection from the judge? For that mysterious death in Miami, a federal prosecutor's body found on Hollywood Beach raising a lot of questions. This morning, police are investigating the death of Miami federal prosecutor and father of three, Baranton Wisenot Jr. The 37-year-old's body was found in the water close to shore on Hollywood Beach in Florida by a civilian walking on the beach early Wednesday morning. Police say he suffered a head wound, possibly caused by a gunshot or another type of trauma. They're currently investigating his death as a crime. Well, uh, from the outset of this case, um, the case has been marked by a series of uh, very disturbing and concerning uh, events, uh, starting uh, with the uh, unexpected death of our process server, uh, Sean Lucas, uh, who uh, originally served the DNC at their headquarters uh, last year, and then uh, weeks later was found uh, dead on his bathroom floor uh, by his uh, girlfriend. Um, we've also had uh, the murder of Seth Rich, who uh, very well uh, might have been a potential witness in this case. Um, and that's even uh, not even getting into the issue of whether or not he was uh, the source of the WikiLeaks documents. Witnesses say he was found fully dressed and that personal effects were found on his body. Wisenant had recently joined the U.S. Attorney's Office in January, working in the Major Crimes Unit. I don't know what's going on. You're I'm very emotional right now. I, I can I can honestly understand that. You know, the other day- I'm just a lawyer here. I'm just a lawyer here. I, I don't know what's going on. I'd like to know how Capitol Police handle um, equipment that belongs to a member or a staffer that's been lost within the Capitol complex and found or recovered by one of your officers. So if a member says that they have equipment that's been lost and you find it, it would be returned to the member? In the general sense, yes. Okay. It has to, you have to identify, you have to be able to positively identify the property and be able to establish ownership. Right, and, and if ownership is established. If it's part of an ongoing case, then there are additional things that need to be done. But if the member owns the equipment and there is no ongoing case related to that member, then the equipment is supposed to be returned. Right, in, 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 in a general sense, yes. If no, I mean in a specific sense. Right. Yeah, I don't understand how that's possible. Members' equipment is members' equipment that is not, it is not, it, under my understanding, the Capitol Police is not able to confiscate members' equipment when the member is not under investigation. It is their equipment and it's supposed to be returned. Well, I think there's extenuating circumstances in this case.
think you're violating the rules when you, when you conduct your business that way and should expect that there would be consequences. There would be consequences. There's some breaking news about a story we've been following here on Special Report. The investigation into a Capitol Hill computer scandal has taken a dramatic turn. Fox News has learned one of the IT staffers being investigated in the case is now under arrest. Caught, as investigators say, he tried to leave the country last night. FBI agents seized smashed computer hard drives from the home of a tech worker who worked for Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Well, a Pakistani national who was also a longtime aide to the former chairwoman of the Democratic National Committee, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, has been arrested after trying to flee this country. Imran Awan has been charged with felony bank fraud. Awan had been under investigation for months. He was banned from the House computer system in February for posing a security risk. And yet, for some reason, Wasserman Schultz kept him on her payroll until just yesterday. Not only that, but she actually tried to sabotage the investigation into Awan. She threatened Capitol Police after they seized a laptop. What we do know is that one of our employees uh, received a call, and the caller ID showed up upon further investigation. Uh, it was linked to Debbie Wasserman Schultz's office in Aventura, but the caller uh, was using some type of uh, voice recognition or voice uh, masking uh, technology to disguise the voice. So it sounded uh, very, very robotic uh, to our employee and very, very concerning. And they were asking a whole series of questions about uh, the, uh, the DNC fraud lawsuit. And so we immediately uh, brought that to the court's attention. And this was even before uh, we filed uh, the motion for protection with the court. Awan started working for Wasserman Schultz in 2005. She, of course, was forced to resign as chair of the Democratic National Committee one year ago after WikiLeaks began posting her hacked emails online. In all the daily caller reports that Awan, his brothers, their wives, and others collected at least $4 million for IT services performed for Democratic lawmakers.